Hi, and welcome to the Assemblines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. So today we're coming to you from the Media Archaeology Lab. We're going to interview Harry Edwards, who was a repair technician and a sales trainer for Frieden calculators back in the 1960s. Harry just donated a Frieden SW10 electromechanical calculator to the lab, and we're going to hear about his adventures repairing these calculators back in the 1960s. So let's get started. My name is Harry Edwards, and I've been around for 86 years, so that's where it starts. I have uh, done a lot of things in my life, and uh, I tried farming, I tried to uh, work at Rocky Flats Energy Company for a while, spent four years in the Air Force re rebuilding airplane engines, so we did that for four years. So I've tried a lot of things. And when I came out of the service, I uh, went to work for, well, I ended up starting out with uh, public service in Denver. And then I moved on into going to Rocky Flats, where I became an assembler. And anybody that's interested in Rocky Flats knows what that's all about. <clears throat> we, were, we were building the ignition heads for the bombs. And... Uh, so I did that for a couple of years and decided that was not a good place to be when you're getting soaked every night with radiation. So anyway, that went on and I went, got out of there and went down and took over my dad's farm for a while and uh, didn't make much money at that. So consequently, in February of 1959, I uh, went up to Denver and got a job at Frieden. That's where it started. So they trained me in the shop there for a while. There were several of us working in there. It was an up-and-coming thing. They had opened a branch in Denver. Basically, they came out of New York. No, they came out of San Leandro, California. And uh, so I worked in the, in the shop for a while, and then they put us out in the field just taking care of these machines, taking service calls and all of that stuff. And they finally sent us to school in 1961 in San Leandro, which was about a three months course. And from learned from start to finish, taking these things apart piece by piece by piece, being able to put them back together again, and do that. So I did that for, to long story short, I worked there 11 years. And then when Frieden closed the doors, they, they merged back with Singer, <clears throat> excuse me. And then, uh, so, did a lot of work. We had a really big business with the, during that period of the world, the Great Western Sugar Company, and when they did their campaigns, all of these towns in these outlying areas, they leased and rented these machines during the campaign. Hundreds and hundreds of machines that we took care of. That was really kept us, that was the busiest job we had during those campaign times. Because when one of these things quit and locked up, they needed it. So did a lot of driving, a lot of miles, all over three states, taking care of machines during the campaign. That's where I learned the most of it. They were, it was a serious job because they, they really depended on these things. They didn't have these little pocket machines. They used the heck out of these things every day. And... Uh, if we uh, ran into it, we always carried two or three of them in our car. Extra ones that we, I mean, we drive from here to Clarpin in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And we get a situation like this where you got to tear this clear down. We just left them alone. Take this into the shop. We had three guys in the shop, full-time shop guys. And uh, we'd tell them what the problem was and they would pursue accordingly. Because we didn't have time to stay in the shop because we were busy out in the field. Uh, but that's how we did it, and that's how we kept them running. And uh, so it was really kind of a shame at the time then, but the time that was closing out, why well, they got into the electronic machines, and we had one of the first electronic, great big machines, don't remember the number now, but it had 
one button you push for square root. Mm -hmm. You can do square root on these, but boy, you got to know what you're doing. <laughs> it's a real process, but you can do it. And if you can find that book, you would find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's too bad he didn't find the book for this. But anyway, there's stories like that. Just everybody's got different stories. But, yeah. Where was your office, the shop? In Denver? Yeah. 1250 Bannock Street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. But you would also do service like in somebody's office out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We had a lot of machines up at Climax Millennium, the mine. And we'd go up there. About three or four of us would go. We'd go up there and we'd work like crazy, get our work done, then we'd go ski it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Other? Yep. Do you, do you remember how much they cost? How much did they run? I don't know. You don't remember? I, I wasn't selling them. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I don't just remember. curious just because I imagine it was a huge investment for a business. To well, for that one. type of time yeah. period, yeah. I, yeah Especially I really if don't it know. was in a smaller office, yeah. if they had a single. I know when that electronic one came out, it was quite expensive. Oh, yeah. I think they were two or three grand. Yeah. And these old guys, I don't remember. It depends upon the model. Yeah. So <laughs> when they closed the doors and that was it, and uh, I ended up going to work for 3M Company. Spent another 18, 20 years there, and I was a sales rep for 3M, but I did sales and service on these things for those 11 years. Wow. So that pretty well gets me down to almost the age I am. That's kind of the story. They're a great machine. They're well built. They're very heavy. Mm -hmm. And so I hope you guys have fun with it. Yeah. Uh, you can use it. Just play with it. Did you ever find a book for it? Um, I haven't found one for that model yet. Well, the basic would be the same. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Basically, if you does. find one that's an STW10, mm -hmm. it's got three more buttons over here for the multiplier. Okay. So it's basically the same. Yeah, same. The operation is the same. Okay. Yeah. That's great. So how did how did you uh, come to own this machine? Like where where did this one come from? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> when I went to work for Frieden. Uh, my older brother, he was six years older than I, uh, he came to work for Frieden also. And when, again, back to when Frieden closed the doors on us in Denver, he went to work for another local company and they had Victor's, they had all kinds of other machines. So he ended up with this machine and I think now I know why because it didn't work right. <laughs> anyway, he and I both are, you know, one of these guys that kind of hang on to stuff for some reason, we don't know why. But anyway, he kept this machine because they were closing out also and kind of the end of the era for these old clunkers. So that would be Rick's dad. And when he passed away, we found this in his garage. <laughs> Been sitting there for about 30 years. Hmm. So it was a survivor via the fact that he just kept it. <laughs> he was always going to make it. He was going to work on it. He could work on them just like I do, but he never did do it. I originally cleaned it up once and got it running from that point, and they actually hand delivered it almost to Seattle mm -hmm. <laughs> to give to Kathy. And then Kathy got in touch with, I don't know, you guys somehow. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she decided she wanted to donate it to you. So she wanted me to, because it quit again on her too. And so. We got it running, and that's where we are now. So, the time that I've spent on it here has been fun. Yeah. So, how often, like when you were working on them, how often did you have to tear them down, like as much as you did on this one? I mean, was that fairly regular, where you had to actually go all the way down inside it, or was it more? Well, yeah, mostly if you got a major problem, you got it. Yeah. Probably one of the crazy things that was either those keys or levers were sticking, and or those little springs. There's ten million little springs in there, and the springs break. Mm -hmm. And when that spring breaks, that lever's not going to return. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can be very one simple little spring that shuts you down. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, most of the time we could fix them in the office, in the customer's office. But if it was going to be a long ordeal, well, we just picked them up and took them in. Yeah. If we had time when we were, well, we, we didn't have time to do it as guys out in the field, but we'd go in the shop and work on them. And uh, we had three good guys in the shop that they worked with it every day, so it was a little easier for them to dove into something that was deep. I mean, we tore these clear down to the frame and wow. to find the problem. And so, yeah. 
Did most people, if they owned one, also have a service contract with you? Most of it, yeah. yes. Good question. Instead of just hiring you yep. if they needed something, yeah, they just yeah. had a Yeah, we'd charge contract. them by the hour yeah. if we had to. Yeah. But we sold a lot of service contracts, yes. Yeah. Good point. I would, ima yeah, I would mm -hmm. imagine that it would be yeah. more cost efficient oh, yeah. to just have a service contract yeah, absolutely. Yeah. and keep it running that yeah. way instead of waiting until there yeah. was a major problem. Well, Freedom was good to us. They furnished his cars and yeah. expenses and all that stuff. But we wore out a lot of cars. <laughs> <laughs> but that's about all I can tell you. All right. Any, anything else you want to? That covers it for me. I'd love to see a little bit of a demonstration just how did I'm going to sit you down here and let you run it. All right. <laughs> you walk me through it. <laughs> okay. So, well, put in some numbers and add them. And just plus. Just add something to it. Plus. Did you get an answer? Yeah, I did. I wonder if it's right. It is. <laughs> I did it in my head first. <laughs> yeah, that's good for you. Now we can try this to see just for the fun of it. Mm -hmm. uh, touch that tab key that doesn't work properly. What okay. that does is it moves it over to your tab position. Okay. Okay. So this is the... Put in 144. Okay. And touch the plus. What you've done, uh, okay. you put that Set in. Okay. decimal point. Okay. Now put in 12 and touch both of those keys. Both of these? Yeah. Don't get much of an answer, do we? Nope. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. That's all right. <laughs> but that's how normally clear it. If you put in 144 mm -hmm. and touch, that normally puts that in there. Okay. Do you see it? No. Nope. No, we don't. So we've got. That's the that's problem with that is. key at the gotcha. bottom end of this thing. Gotcha. So you can divide it, but it's not the right answer. Okay. Okay. Put in uh, whatever you want over there, multiply over something. Here. Yep, yeah. Okay. And what are you going to multiply it by? Oh, I don't know. Pick a number, that's there it. Just go. like gambling, pick a number. Yeah. <laughs> okay, multiply. This one? Mm -hmm. And that should right. be right. It yeah, multiplies right. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, cool. there's two factors to this. That proves that the keyboard's right now. Mm -hmm. The keys, when you... Push the keys down, the levers come down, they contact the mm -hmm. lobes of the actuators. Yep. So we know they're turning properly. Yeah. And they're turning properly for everything, just not That's for right. This. That's gotcha. right. How much, do you know how much training they actually gave operators, like people who actually had to use these? I mean, was it... Well, yeah, the sales guys did it when they sold them okay. originally. Yep. And then we had to redo it again when we went back <laughs> for a call because that's exactly what happened. Yeah. They didn't understand they all that. Or they, the sales guys went through it awful fast. Mm -hmm. It takes a while to do this, yeah. and especially they let the machine there and they let them run it, and they soon learn, like, she'll know now what to do, yeah, but tomorrow, next week, oh, what did he tell me? Yeah. Yeah. And so we would get service calls for that. So, so sometimes it was really easy to do the service call, because oh, yeah. you'd be like, oh, you just hit this key you here. Know the easiest yeah. call I ever made was, I drove her 200 miles, machine wasn't working. I walked in, looked at it, I plugged it in. Yeah. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm serious. Um, cool. Happy birthday. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is great. You got the cover someplace over there. So. Yeah, we've got a cover for it. Yeah.